All right, so the one of these new features that I found in Webpack I thought was worth sharing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the context object in Webpack. Um, so most of the code that we write tends to look something like this: import, um, you know. Um, so that would bring in Lodash. And that is an import that is known at build time. So um, Webpack can immediately know that it needs to bring in the Lodash object from the Lodash library. However, there's times that you might want to be able to dynamically require files. So you might have something that looks more like this. Um, you might need to be able to record to require uh, templates based on their name, or images based on their name, or um, other JavaScript files. What's really cool about Webpack is that it will figure out, based on what the require looks like, what it needs to do. So if you just have a string here, it knows that it can go find that file and bundle it into the package. But if you have a variable here, then it will parse that require statement, realize that it needs to go into the template directory, and it will include every file in that directory that matches this regular expression. And it automatically generates that regular expression for you based on the string that you've typed out here, which is really, really cool and really, really beneficial. So if you have a situation where you have a um, these three files in your template directory, uh, when you add this line of code, these three files will be included in the bundle and then it will generate this context module which allows you to get a hold of the code inside of any of those modules at runtime. So does that make sense? Like all of the code is actually in the file, in the package. So table jade, table row jade, folder dot jade will be included in the package. And then in this case, um, it uses an identifier of 22, 23, 24, etc. So then when I go to require table jade right here, when the name is table, it will go find that file in the package and insert the code, load it up at the moment that you need it. It allows you to basically do a dynamic require. So that's really, really cool and really, really powerful. And the require statement doesn't have to go to the top of the import, right? Like you could do Correct. something in a function. Yeah, so the require statement doesn't have to go over the top of the file. It could go inside of a function or somewhere deep inside of your code. Yeah, very powerful. Um, the other thing that's really neat about this is that if you don't know ahead of time that you want to do something like this, that maybe what you want to do is include an entire directory, then you can generate your own context. And that's what this method, um, let's see here. That's what this does right here. So, for example, we have a situation in one of the projects where we have a directory filled with images, and which image is to be loaded is going to be determined by a JSON file. So, we have a, a JSON file that holds all the theming data, and then we have a directory that has all the images. So, the code has no idea which of those images it might need um, at runtime. So what we can do is say require context and then you give it the directory where all those images live and then your regular expression can be include everything. And then when you do that it will include all of those files and if they're image files what's going to happen is it will pass through um, an image loader. So if you go to our webpack config file that looks like this. So anything that's a GIF, GIF, whatever you want to call it, PNG, JPEG, or SVG will pass through the URL loader. Um, and you can send it through other loaders. We also have the image webpack loader. If you want to optimize it on the fly, you could do that. But um, the URL loader is going to say, if the image is less than 5K, go ahead and include it inline as a data URL. If it's bigger than that, then include the actual URL to the image. Um, it will generate a hash 
for the file name so that we can take advantage of caching. And so the resulting file is going to look like name dash hash with the extension, and that's what's going to get included at runtime in your files. So um, using this method right here, then what we can do is, and this will hopefully help illustrate exactly what's going on. I can write a really simple bit of code that essentially, if you're familiar with Rails and the Rails asset pipeline, this one line of code pretty much replaces the Rails asset pipeline, kind of. Uh, what we do here is we say, we want to include everything. The true right here means include subdirectories as well, and this regular expression is just going to match everything. Um, so go to the assets directory. So we've added an assets directory to our client application. And right now we only have images. We could add fonts, we can add CSS, we can add whatever we want. And anything that we add is gonna get sent through Webpack. Um, now what's really cool is I've just included three images right here. Uh, I've got some tests. So let's take a look at the tests first. Why is that not loading up? Oh, it's because it's over here. There we go. So let's do this. Okay, so here are my tests. So you can see that um, this just exports this context object, which is a function. And if I give that function a path, it will give me a URL. Um, and in this case, it gives me the URL as a um, inline data image object. All right. So we'll go and we'll run this. Let's see. I just do npm run test. This will run karma and run our specs. Give us just a second here. Okay, so you can see that all of our tests ran successfully, but it'll be helpful to actually take a look and see what code is running. So we're going to take a look at this in the console. Okay, and there's actually an error in these tests that we'll fix as we go along. Uh, so let's put a breakpoint right there and then just refresh this. Okay, so what we can see, so if I step over that, you see there's my JPEG. Uh, it's base64 encoded. And I can stick that directly in line. Um, and I'll show you how to do that here in just one second. But that's really cool because it means that I was able to just specify a directory. And then ahead of time, Webpack will either copy those images into the build directory or inline them into the package that Webpack builds. Um, and you can see it works with an SVG right here. And I've got to go change this SVG to a different file. We'll do that here in just one second. Um, and then show the result of that. All right, so I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. Let's take a look at this object. So, you know, Webpack, when it builds this final package, uh, a lot of times your variables are not going to look like what they originally did. In this case, this assets to default is the thing that that's our context. So if I ask for keys, then I can get the keys off of that object. And you can see it found all of the images in my images directory. If I had had other things like fonts or whatever, it would find those too. And then um, when I build it, see we're in development mode right now, but when I build it, these will have hashed names. So let's go take a look really quick at the code. And right here, um, you can see I've duplicated this SVG to, with this SVG. The PNG in this directory is a bigger file. It's bigger than the 5K limit. So if we change that, then this should not actually be this data object anymore. It should give us a URL. Um, and it should be something like this. I'm not entirely sure what it's going to spit out. So let's go take a look. Come over here. Uh, let's put a breakpoint right there. Run our tests. All right, so big looks like that. So it generates a valid URL, um, which since we're running Karma, it's 
looks a little funny, and copy and paste that over into my test. So it's going to fail this first time. But it should succeed the next time. Run it. So, come over here and see we have 19 successful tests. So that fixed all of the tests. Okay. So now, how do you actually use this in your code? I've got this component right here called Home JSX. All I have to do is import assets from the libs directory. So I've just created assets just right there. It's just a utility library with literally one line of code in it. Um, and now I can say image equals assets and I give it a path. This path is going to be a relative path inside of the assets directory. It's not going to be relative to this file, which is actually really nice because then I don't have to figure out the path all the way up to the assets directory and then all the way down to the image. Instead, everything can just be relative to the Assets directory. Right now, well, not really. Like, and then you have right here. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. You do have to know where to import assets from. Mm -hmm. But you do that once, and then every time you use it in all your images, you can do this. So that's mm -hmm. a nice thing. Um, okay, so we have the hot reloader enabled in our page. So if I go to my page here, you can see there's the image. Um, and then if we inspect that element, it's been inlined. So that JPEG is less than 5K, so it is inline. Let's go change that to the PNG. Save that. And then go to the right. Turned off the server. My bad. Okay, so we'll start up the server. Okay, so there's the PNG. And now if I inspect that, it should give me, it should show that it's a URL, which it is. It didn't inline at that time, it gave me the right URL to the file. All right, so just to prove that the heart reload actually does work, G right there. I flip back over, and there's the JPEG. Okay, um, so that's cool. And then um, the last thing to note is that when you build this for production, actually even when you build it for dev here, notice that the one file, the PNG, that is too large to be inlined, is the only one in the directory, but it is in the directory. So Webpack figured out that it needed to take this file generate this hash and then include that and now I can take these files from this directory and upload that to like an Amazon S3 bucket and I could serve this as a static website off the S3 bucket and everything would just work and all the paths would be correct which is really cool and really powerful. Okay, any questions? No? Does this look useful?